What is up? Does everybody see me? Had a little bit of a hiccup already. I hope I'm uh, hoping I'm uh, visible. Big Dawn, say hi in the chat. I'll try to say your name. Am I here? Hello? <laughs> okay, good, great. It freaking worked, awesome. We're gonna let some people just filter in for about a minute and then I'll show you what's going on here. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you a picture of my snake. You know, it's like a, a theme, um, <laughs> like a recurring theme on this channel. This is last night. Look at this monster. That's like a really large guinea pig and uh, I fed her uh, this is the first time she ate for me, so it's a big deal. I got, I've had her for five weeks now, and she needed to settle in. And she's a 17-foot reticulated python. But this was uh, not live. Like, this was already pre, you know, it was a frozen thawed guinea pig. But very excited that she actually finally ate. Um, the night before... I uh, I decided to spoon my snake, <laughs> uh, just to show like how big she is. She's a monster. She's a monster. She's not venomous. Don't worry. All right. So if you're gonna spam, you're gonna be put in timeout. So no more. Uh, why do you keep saying off, dude? Stop that. Users in timeout. Okay. Unreal. All right, so this isn't a normal stream like uh, where I, we're doing the live UI UX reviews. This is a stream where I, I'm i gonna kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, because I'm going to work on the designcourse.com curriculum so we can get it launched sometime this summer. Um, and there's a lot of cool things about this. It's not like a, just a, a typical video course. There, there's a lot more to it than just video, uh, a lot more ways to learn. So um, somebody asked, what do I mean by relaunch? Well, I'm talking about designcourse.com. Uh, we've generated about 10,000 emails almost uh, from people um, you know, who want to be notified when it's launched. But basically, it's going to be a... Um, a subscription service where you learn UI UX and it's not just video so let me show you what I mean I uh, so if I go back to modules this is like the the main um, design so far that we have for the modules and of course there's not a lot here there's going to be hundreds of them um, but there's four different module types the first is uh, video obviously um, there's also going to be courses so eat this like this module this right here could be an entire course just in this single little uh, module row right here um, and then we're also going to have tests which is what I'm going to be creating today one of the many tests that will exist and then we will also have uh, user submitted uh, design challenges where you submit a Figma prototype or Adobe XD prototype and I personally rate and review it um, and it, it's all going to be worked in within the curriculum that's meant to be taken in a linear progression like from start to finish although it's not going to be enforced um, and so that way you're not just learning through video alone uh, it's interactive oh we're also going to have like weekly or bi-weekly live UI UX workshops where I'll be you know teaching it and then just it's only exclusive to the members of the site um, there will be two pricing tiers. First is going to be probably like either 10 or 15 bucks a month and you'll access everything except for the user submitted design challenges because that takes extra work from me uh, to actually review your work and provide feedback. So the second tier will include that as well, um, possibly with the live UI UX workshops and uh, it'll, that'll be a little bit more um, pricier, but nothing crazy. Um, and so let me just show you what the test is. So what is a UI test uh, in terms of this service? Um, here's an example of a very simple, it's the first one I made uh, last week. And let me just increase the scale. So this is a simple card design inside of here. And we can see over here, we have a number of different UI fundamentals. 
And this interface is gonna change a little bit. We're actually gonna have a point system, um, but it's not worked in yet. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on having at least dozens, possibly a hundred plus or hundreds of these UI tests. And the idea is you have to look at the given design. Right, right here, it's a simple, plain, boring card design, right? Um, or like a modal pop-up or a toast, if you will. Um, you have to look at it and figure out which one of these listed over here, and sometimes it may only list a couple, it might list more or all the UI fundamentals, and figure out and check off which one is incorrect. You know, So out of all of these, you can go through and say, okay, is there any element of this design in which the white space is wrong? Uh, is the contrast incorrect about any of these? Especially if we're dealing with text and making sure that we're adhering to the web content accessibility guidelines uh, for contrast, like making sure we have at least 4.5 to one contrast ratios. Uh, is there anything wrong about color? No, there's, there's no color here that's used anyways. Is there anything wrong that's really off about topography? I don't see anything that's wrong here. What about scale? The scale looks pretty good, especially in relation to the text. What about visual hierarchy? That looks pretty good as well. We can see, you know, notice this is a, an important part, so it's gonna be made large, so it reinforces the visual hierarchy. You know where to look first. Um, what about white space? Well, there is something wrong about the white space. I mean, what can you see? Can you see, any, is there any issues about the white space here? So the white space, again, is the empty space or the negative space around the design. Well, let's click on white space. All right, do you see it? Did you see what happened? Well, it shows you what happened when you click on uh, the white space. It moved this element over. There was an incorrect amount of white space to the right of this little X button. So uh, if I click on contrast, you'll see you know certain messages pop up. Oops, nothing wrong here, blah, blah, blah. And every time you click a wrong one, you get a wrong answer, a point will be deducted from your total. Every time you get a right answer, a point will be added. Now, there's nothing wrong with the color, but I, I designated it as being one anyways, just for the purpose of showing this. Uh, so when you get all of them right, it'll say test is complete, and then you can either continue on to the next one or go back to the modules. So in this live stream, I'm gonna create one of these from scratch one of these tests because we have a backend that we created. JVS, my moderator, who is currently a moderator in the chat as well, which is Jell Van Snick. Is that how you pronounce your name? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so this, doing dozens of these or a hundred of these is, is just gonna be one way in which people can really start to develop an eye to understand the extremely necessary fundamentals that you need in order to become a good designer yourself. Um, so you know, taking this comprehensive approach where you're watching videos, where you're actually doing work with the project submissions and you're doing interactive tests like this, it's gonna be a nice, I think, uh, comprehensive way to, to really, as best as possible, become as good as a UI UX designer uh, as much as possible. So let's go ahead and create one of these. Um, so we have an admin system that we created. Let me just go back to uh, home here. So we have like this project. Uh, now it's not all polished, but it's definitely you know right now we could still work with it. Um, oh, and by the way, when it comes to these UI ch uh, tests, in order to drum up anticipation and get a lot of people excited, I'm going to create uh, its own little module here, and it's going to consist of nothing but tests and it's gonna be free for everybody to try. So it's gonna be kind of like a game. Where I'm hoping it'll become like real popular on sites like Product Hunt, uh, and that way we can try to drum up anticipation for the eventual launch, so look out for that. Um, so let's go here to Edit Project, and I wanna create a new test, all right? So the way we do this is we create a new module down here, and I don't really know, really know what I want the test to be. Let's just make this test be about fixing contrast in white space in one single test, in one design. So we're gonna call this, uh, I have to figure out, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I have to figure out um, the type of design I wanna create first, which means I'm gonna have to step inside of Adobe XD um, to create the design first. Let's just do that before we create uh, the actual test, because I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. Like, 
I don't want to keep I don't want to do the same type of design over and over like a card every time I want to you know try to make it unique um, so let's do something else something that's not you know something that's component based I don't want to do a full layout for this test which you know full layouts will be there eventually but let's just do something that's component based so if you have suggestions for me to illustrate maybe incorrect white space and uh, contrast let me know what you think what type of component a UI component should I design for it could be something um, like a navigation yeah we could do a navigation um, what else could this be yes this will be launching I'm hoping either this summer or late summer um, you know what I think I like the idea of doing just a, a, a navigation maybe just a vertical navigation like sidebar and that's the only thing you'll see so that's that's what I'm gonna do yeah I know Lasha uh, <laughs> I had the anticipation of having this finished already but Scrimma came at me with an offer to create my uh, course that I just re that was they, they just released yesterday and so I, I got really focused on that um, so that put this on the back burner but at least I'm, I'm now full force on this I'm not going to be taking any other projects I'm working on this every single day all right so what I want to do first is we're gonna I want to work with the same background color that we have for the um, what do you call where am I at oh right here so if I click on here I want to get this background color so let me come here and we'll just get this background here there we go all right and now get out of here I'm so lazy I never update anything so now what we'll do is I I'm gonna create just a, a real quick prototype so I know exactly what I need to design for and then we'll create that in the back end so let's create uh, this something probably like this big and then by the way this is where this will require me writing the HTML and the CSS um, within the the admin panel and you'll see how it all works it's really it's it, it works very well JVS is the one who created it um, and it's just it's it's really dynamic I like it a lot um, so let's just give this a background color here something that contrasts well um, what color do I want to go with I, I was th I was kind of thinking of going with like a colored pull-out navigation maybe something like that and then inside of here um, so we're assuming that this is going to be on mobile and this is just the the the, the slide out navigation that that happens when you click on like a hamburger menu so that's going to be the purpose of this uh, right here oh by the way in case you, know, the, you, you remember my call out video with Kevin Powell I've just been talking um, to him on discord and he just said that we're going to be going live on Monday he's going to code my challenged user interface on Monday or at least that's his plan uh, so look out for that <laughs> all right um, let's all right so by the way maybe I'm gonna share this stream in the, in the super ultra secret uh, creators hangout where Kevin Powell is and maybe we'll get some other youtubers here to say hi in the chat let me do that real quick um, over here let me get this link copy link um, I'm not gonna show their chat just because I don't know it's so secret you can't see it I'm sorry all right there we go I told him it's live so maybe we might get some big youtubers in here in, in the uh, comment section all right so my goal here initially is to design this um, and show the what do you call show the um this is going to be the final version like after it's fixed and then we can break stuff with the contrast and, and all that so um, we'll just have a link here um, we'll say home this is going to be real typical Maybe I can I'm working can work in something a little more little that little bit more interesting. Um, let's just do um, screw it. Let's go with Poppins. 
I love my poppins uh, last few months. Um, just home. I'm trying to think if I want to add anything else interesting about it. Um, because we could add separators, like line separators. Um, trying to think about the direction in which I want to take this. Yeah, we could do a search bar. Um, this is the Poppins font. Yeah, we could do a search bar. Let's do a search bar. I like that idea, just to make it interesting, a little bit more interesting. So we'll come up here. We'll put a little search bar. Although, well, does it make sense to put a search bar in the navigation? Hmm. Does that make sense from like a, a UX perspective? Usually, you would click on... You know what, just for the fun of it, let's forget about that. Let's just add it just for the sake of the design aspect. All right. Um, we'll make this pill shape. Um, let's see here. Well, I'll just repeat grid this. Five is pretty standard. Ungroup the grid, home, services, contact us. Wait, no, we'll just do fact. No, we'll do about us, fact for frequently asked questions, and then contact us. Um, the search bar, yeah, that's lame. Let's see here. Um, we could do something like. Yeah, we could like dim it out kinda and then have like a magnifying glass. I'll just type search. I like icons for design plugin. There we go. You know, I just, hmm, I wondered something. I'm not sure if we can have assets yet JVS, can I, because I'm going to have to specify this uh, in CSS. So like the actual background image, that's what I'm going to plan on using for this text bar. I, I forgot. I can use Amazon S3 um, for hosting this. Never mind. Okay. All right. And maybe I will designate the current, currently active link. We'll say it would be services by taking these down in opacity or um, and I have to make sure that we're adhering to, um, let's use Stark, the Stark plugin. Rapid contrast checker. So if I click on this and this, we're at 5.09 with being absolutely white, I, which is acceptable. If I take this down, we're at 2.5. There's a lot of different ways you can denote the current page. Um, you could do something like just making this bold. Like that. Sometimes you could do it by indenting and maybe having a, a small icon or um, we could do this. We could just like, I've duplicated this real quick. Um, we could do that. Although I kind of want to have hover states. Yeah, that's fine. So this is this is going to be good right here, I think. I uh, just for you know a very a, a, a relatively simple design. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I, I have to create the HTML and CSS for this. So now we'll take 
Let's see if I can get this position over here so I can see everything I need at the same time. We're going to we're going to go back to our challenge system. All right. And then we're going to go back to the admin section and I'm going to create the new test. We're going to call this uh, simple navigation. I may end up renaming all of these. Um, simple navigation will be part of the URL slug. We're going to create the module and then we edit it right here. And then we choose the module type. Like I mentioned, there's four different types. There's video, courses, tests, and challenges. So the test also has that uh, test title. I'm not going to put anything in the description. Let's put DESC. And then I can open up the editor. So now, yeah, normally you would probably have a way to click off of this, um, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. Again, more focused on UI rather than just UX. Um, I may end up editing it afterwards, but I kind of want to move this along and get done within an hour. So here's the HTML and the CSS. And so what I can do is I can switch over to here. And in order for me to see that new test that I add, I have to go back real quick, dev.design course, to the admin area. And we have to change, we have to go to our project. We have to add to a list, our simple navigation save it and then now it shows up so here's the test and it's currently empty because I haven't specified any HTML and CSS I uh, Finn there's no coding here a part of this this course uh, or the whole design course you know system I may actually afterwards uh, sometime down the road create a whole front-end development path but I'm not doing that I'm the one who's creating the code this is just for the purpose of using the test. If you don't know what that is, you, you join the stream late, just, just rewind and, not, and you'll see the purpose of these, these what are called tests. Um, so let's go back here. All right, here's the HTML. So here's how cool this is. So I could type in div class, or let's do, um, let's do a side. And let's just put in real quickly, um, well, let's put into it type equals text. Um, and then we're only going to have an input, so that's fine. Um, and let's just uh, come out here and then we save it. And then if we go back to our navigation, it's right there. You see? How cool is that? Okay, so let's continue on. Um, let's go back here. And so now I have to figure out the markup for this. So we already have the input. We're gonna put in a nav element because this is a navigation. Maybe I should increase this so we can all see. And then inside of our nav, we'll have an unordered list. We'll have a list item. We'll have an ahref home we even have code completion how awesome is that all right so now I can go ahead and replicate these we have five of them services um, let's see here about us fact and content or contact us not content all right so let's, uh, that's that's good right here. JVS, would it be cool if I could just hit Control S and it will save it and then that way I can just switch here to refresh because right now it doesn't um, save until I go back here. Let me go back to the uh, module and just hit save manually. So now I can go back here and I'll, wait a second, what happened? I think I have to do this by toggling X and then hit save over here. Let me see if that's the case. Yeah, it is, okay. So we need to get this here to look like that. Um, one more, one final thing, I have to get over, let me close this out, I'm getting all confused here. Open editor, I have to denote or have a way to specify which uh, service is active. So let's do class equals active. All right, 
So now we switch to the CSS. All right, so we have, what was the HTML? An aside, so we'll do aside. Background is going to be what? It's this blue color, copy that. All right, so we have a padding all around. And that padding, you know, is uh, 33, so we'll just say it's 2M units. So 2Ms. Uh, border rate, wait, it's, it's, we don't have a border on that. We don't need it. I really like border, especially there's a pill container inside. So we will have some subtle borders. So we'll do border radius 0.3M units maybe, as you can see right here. Maybe we'll go 0.2. Although I am zoomed up on this, so let me reset that. Yeah, 0.3 is fine. So plus, get zoom up so we can all see. All right, so then um, we're gonna do a side. Um, what do we? What else does our markup look like? We have our nav. Oh, I just forgot something. I hate when I do that. This has to go all the way out. So the padding is going to prevent us unless we do margin offsets or whatever. I don't want to do that. So we're going to take the padding off here. We'll add the padding onto input um, type equals text. And we'll just do um, padding 2M there. I mean, no, margin rather. There we go. And then we'll deal with uh, this stuff down here. So. Now we'll take our our nav um, in because we we did use an unordered list, but we don't see any bullet points which are default for unordered lists. The styling we already have removed that, um, so we, I don't have to worry about that. Um, let's do just the links here. There's no other links as a part of this, so I don't have to put other selectors to get us there. Uh, that's unnecessary. So let's do display um, block. And then that'll give us the ability to put padding here. Um, so if I put two M units, way too much, but zero. All right, so zero, two M units, like that. Yeah, that'll work. And then colors white. Um, let's also do font family, Poppins. So I'm gonna need a way yeah, I'll probably just have to import. So let me go to google.com, fonts, pop-ins, where are you? We got it normal. Let's see, where's, where's regular rather? Select, and then also bold 700. Select that, we'll just use import. I think that should work. JVS can let me know. See, I already have the font installed on my local machine, so I'm not sure if, like, you know, it should work. Oh, okay. JVS just told me, um, yeah, it's not sandbox, so I'm going to have to make sure that I don't use just general HTML elements names as selectors. I'm going to have to use classes. I forgot about that. So what I'll do is, um, let's see. What I could do then is just put a class here um, and we'll just call this something that isn't gonna be confused by any other classes used elsewhere throughout the app. I'll just do this um, test hyphen nav. And then I can come here and just put, um, what was it? Did I really forget that quick? Um, test dash nav, okay. so test nav aside. So let me know if that's good, JVS. Like a, a decent way of dealing with it. Um, and then that way, I can also do test nav and test nav here. Wait, oh, that was outside of it. What I should do then is give this a class, test search. What am I doing? Get back there. And then we'll just do test search here. Why is that not working? Oh, I'm messing up all my, uh, what is this? 
test search that's margin all right test nav aside oh yeah that, that's why I'm being simple there test aside we could just do that all right so now um, we're gonna take our test nav ul margin bottom two m units all right, so now we have it figured out there. Um, we need to give padding, a little bit more padding on um, the top and bottom um, of these. So we're gonna do like 0.3M units. Now it's a little bit more than that. All right, that's looking better. All right, and then um, we'll do the hovers as well. No, let's work on the, um, the search bar. So test search. Um, Padding is going to be actually the padding is fine as is. What is the font size at? Um, probably default, obviously. So well, let's do the the um, border radius. <laughs> no, not fifty percent. We'll just go three M. That should be big. Um, opacity is what. Or we'll just do background RGBA, um, 29%. But we also wanna get in the um, background and then we'll put the URL after here. Now I have to go to Amazon S3. I'm gonna do this off screen just because I, 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 I'm not very good at, um, like I'm not great at, what do you call, understanding Amazon web services and like should I be showing you all my stuff? Probably not, I'll just be safe. And so I'm off my screen for a second here. Uh, let's see here design course assets. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, in here, I'm going to take this. Oh, you know what? I have a question. This is, this might be silly. Um, in Figma, when you select an, an SVG asset, you can just right click and copy the SVG code. Is there something similar to that? I think there might be a plugin for that. Oh, copy SVG code. All right, yeah, it's just a plugin. It, it, it's not as handy, it, it, it's not as, it's not built in like Figma. Um, so now what I can do is copy that, save this somewhere, save that somewhere else. Um, we'll just put this on the, well, no, I should save this in my courses folder. I gotta try to be more organized. So curriculum, um, well, I'll just save it there, screw it has to be an SVG. We'll just call this search.svg. All right, and then I'm gonna upload that. Sorry, you can't see all this right now. Add files. All right, upload. And I'm gonna click on it. And here is the code. Okay, great. So now, I can come back to my URL. <laughs> um, no repeat. Sometimes, you know, I might prefer to do this as a pseudo element. I forget how I prefer to usually do these. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, let's see here. Um, I always forget, what is it, X or Y? <laughs> I have to make sure, by the way, I get to 100% here. I don't want anything, yeah, it's still scaled up proportionally. This isn't correct though. Um, let's see, 0.2M, I, 
so that's the top. We want to put like 0.4m. We need a little bit more padding, I think. So let's take uh, padding. And then adjust these. Code with dev, please don't spam. There, that's looking good right there. So now let's just do the um, test nav A hover and background RGBA 255, no, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's just do like 0 0.2 and see what happens. Let's do that 0 0.1. Yeah, maybe point. 08 no point zero 0.09 I'm just kind of comparing it with this one right here alright so now we're gonna do last selector or for now for just to get this working correctly we'll do test nav a um, dot active I think it was background RGBA 0000, 0, 0, 0 point 0.2 there. Um, let me see, point one. The padding on the left has to be pushed over because if I start typing, that's look like balls. So we're gonna do color white, by the way. Um, padding. Font size funky. Um, that's about good enough. Maybe like 1.7. No, not 0.17. 1.7. All right, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, pretty much spot on with what we have. Well, no, it's not. There's more white space here. Let me fix that. Here, let's get this, over, well, let's get this scale down a little bit. I'm gonna temporarily hide all of you. We need that padding all around to be more so. Um, four, four. And then we have to fix this again. Might be a better way to go about this. Um, there that's better all right that's close enough awesome so let me just minimize this now and now we get to break it in some way shape or form look at my hair it is insane by the way I'm growing it out so I usually just prefer to put a freaking hat on because I look like a clown all right all right so now on um, Let's break it. So we want to screw up the white space in some way and also the contrast. So how will we do that? Um, one of the things that I taught in the contrast lesson, I am just going back here. If I go back here and I go to contrast, I've already created this video and I talk about let me hit play here. I need to get to that part. I go over the web con, you know, the WCAG contrast, accessibility, all that. And what do I talk about here? One of the things that you need to make sure, like when you're trying to figure out your contrast, um, it shouldn't just be applied only to type, all right, things that people need to read. It's also to things like icons, right? People need to be able to see clearly the icons because those are necessary for them to be able to use the, uh, the user interface, especially icons that are actionable. So we do have an actionable, well, it's not actionable per se, you don't necessarily have to click it, but that little search icon, if we go back, this right here, um, people need to be able to see it clearly to understand what this box is because it gives it context. So I think we'll screw up 
the contrast right there. That will be the one element that has bad contrast. So what we'll do is we'll take, uh, let's see here. Let me do a quick Google search. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, uh, I might have to put opacity because I don't think you can put a background opacity. There's not a background hyphen opacity uh, VAP property. So if I put opacity like 0.3 here, it kind of just dims out the whole thing. And I think that's fine. This right here, not enough opacity. Um, so that will be one of the things that's incorrect. So when somebody watches you know the contrast section and, and maybe even works with a, a project submission that has to do with uh, contrast they're they should be able to look at this and say hey that contrast is incorrect oh i have to adjust that white space um by putting my what is it the padding let's put 2.5 2.2 okay yeah so the contrast is all wrong here so th that's that's the thing that we'll have screw up so how do I make it so that the system knows how to correct it? Well, we know we screwed it up by this opacity property. So let me exit and save what we have so far. So if I go back um, yeah, to choices, we can add default choices, all right? So under contrast, when we edit the choice, there's a class to apply when clicked and it's going to be contrast or I can name it to something else. Now this is going to be a correct answer and so um, the, tr the title is going to be contrast and we'll just put in uh, the search bar lacked proper contrast something like that and then now we can save it and we go back to that test, which is over here. There we go. So now if I click on contrast, it says test complete because that was the only thing that was there. And then um, one thing that doesn't happen yet is it's not solved. Hey, okay, you know what? Let's just take this person and hit remove. Or wait, no, let's... Uh, hide user on this channel all right because that's like the multiple times you've been doing that all right so uh oops i didn't mean to click that so when somebody clicks on it it needs to fix it though so we have to apply that con we have to we have to designate that contrast uh class opacity one so now if we exit this and we hit save we go back and you choose contrast. Wait, what's happening? Why is it not working? Is it because I had, uh, is it specificity? Yeah, spef specificity? <laughs> because I thought that that should have applied, um, it should have turned that. Let's see here, let's go back. JVS, you can let me know if I did something wrong. Um, yeah, because that's not working. Uh, go back here. Yeah, I mean, there's. Let let me just um, yeah, go back here to open editor. So I'm not sure. Maybe I need to just do test search contrast test search. Maybe. Let's um. Oh, okay. Maybe I should do that. I'm not sure where there is there like a settings. search bar class so it's test search opacity okay so let, let's uh let's try that and save it and go back refresh there it goes now it didn't transition so I'm gonna add a transition onto that um, so what we'll do is go back to the admin section open the editor wait that's the wrong one what am I doing I think we go here. There we go. 
And so I'll just put over here a transition property of opacity for um, like 0.7 seconds, um, like that. All right, I think that should work. So now we can exit and save. We will refresh this. There we go, awesome, look at that. So now we can toggle it. Oh, that's wrong, right? We can show after and we can toggle back and forth. Um, punit, pun, punit, is that how you pronounce it? It should be, or punit, punit chala. Thank you very much uh, for the super chat. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, um, so that's that. We have one more thing that we want to screw up, which is um, going to be the white space. So I could screw up the white space in, in many different areas. Um, we could make this search bar too high. Um, maybe one of these links is just off a little bit. Um, so what should I screw up about this for the UI test? Um, we can have an uneven amount of white space on the inner padding um, over here. Uh, let's think here. You know what I'll do? I'll put not enough white space based on the padding on the top and bottom of these elements. They'll be too squished. It's just gonna, it's gonna look like crap. So let's do that. So what I'll do is, um, let me close that one out. Go back here, open the editor, and we'll go ahead and change, let's see here, right here. So for, instead of 0.5 and 2M units, and this will probably be called white hyphen space. So white space um, test nav A. We'll paste that there because that there, that's the correct white space. But the incorrect will be right here. So like um, on the top and bottom, we'll have, maybe we'll do a negative value. which that is not working correctly, I think. Or we go too much. See, that's not bad enough to me to where it would justify saying that that is incorrect. Um, I thought you would be able to do like negative. Why is that, why is that screwing everything up? Yeah, that's not working at all. I thought that would have worked. Huh. Well, I guess we could go to 2M. Yeah, you're right. I, I should. Re I, I forgot about this. We have like a, a choice emulator right here tab where we can um, just, yeah, do that without having to do that. Okay. Um, let's just go like, Oh, it's because I was, was it because I was doing it there? I'm an idiot. I was in the wrong section. No, it's still not working up there. Yeah, well, let's just do this. Um, we can make it way too much white, white space. We just go opposite way. Although I'm kind of worried about it if it's that tall, like if people are using it on mobile, it might be a problem. I thought that negative padding would have been a thing. Negative margin, okay. And in that case, we can still do what I want then possibly. Let's just put zero here and then put margin. It's like uh, negative 0.4 M units. There we go. We'll just do that. <laughs> that. That's pretty obvious that it's wrong. We could bump it up here probably to like negative 0.2 M units. Hey, stop making fun of me. <laughs> uh, then we could just put margin over here. Uh, we could just do margin zero and then we can transition is 
See, it just goes to show, like, I don't know every single thing about CSS, you know? Okay, uh, transition is going to be, uh, let's see. Um, let's just, we could just put all um, one second or 0.8 seconds. What did I do for the other one? Was it 0.7? Yep, it's up here. Okay. Am I being slow again? Is it, it's just margin opacity like that, or do I specify each one individually, the properties? I'm being slow. Um, let's just do, oh wait, the choice emulator, I forgot about it. All right, so that's that's the correct white space. We also correct the um, contrast there. Okay. Padding. Oh, it's not an asterisk, you freaking moron. It is. Um, all. Yeah, that's not proper. See, I don't use these properties enough. So now I I can't save it. Let's 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 I. There we go. Okay, sweet. Save. Yeah, I I, I deal with so many different types of code. Like sometimes you use the asterisk and, <laughs> and I mix them up. All right, so let's refresh this. And so this is what a person's going to see for this test. And they're going to have to go through these. And what's cool is I could probably remove some of them. Uh, because sometimes there might be overlap in some of these um, UI fundamentals, like alignment. Could you say that alignment is an issue? Maybe not necessarily, but these are aligned. You could say they're aligned improperly. So we could just do, we can remove alignment as an option if there could be overlap in some of these. Um, but white space and contrast certainly are the ones that I need fixed. Wait, why did that test complete show up? Ah, oh, what's going on here? There might be there might be an issue. Why is the same white space is We're going to have to check something here. Edit choice. Oh, this is the correct answer. There we go. That's why. All right. So what we'll put here is there was not enough uh, white space between the navigation um, links. There we go. So now we can save this. There we go. So now the full experience is um, somebody click scale. Nope, scale's fine here. White space. All right. You know what? I think the confetti, first of all, it should probably be positioned somewhere else so you don't see like the uh, the bottom clipping off. Uh, maybe just we could put it behind that little modal that po pops up and make it smaller because it is kind of big. Uh, and then we'll do it one more time, contrast. And there we go. So now we can show the before and after, and it shows you all the fixes that white space and contrast apply to. All right. That's awesome. Worked very well. So each time you click these, you get a point deduction, and it will show up here. Uh, in that bar. Awesome. So just to show other people, we had, there was another one. Um, if you weren't here at the beginning of this stream, uh, how many people are here? I haven't even checked that. Oh, 238. Um, here's another example of just like a little pop-up. So like what's wrong about this design here? Well, is it scale? No. Is it visual hierarchy? Nope. Is it topography, color? 
this one, it, there actually isn't a problem with color, but I had that just for testing purposes. No issue with contrast, but there is an issue with, a, with white space, which is right there in that little area. There was incorrect amount of white space. So now we have two challenges ready to rock. And of course, like I said, there's gonna be, I'm gonna be making many more of these challenges. I. Uh, going forward. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. So the, the confetti thing should probably only show up when the test is complete. Um, that way it's not it's it's not showing up every time. Uh, so JVS can do that and put that on the, the to do list. Um, yeah, so that's should, that should work. So there's an, a CSX extractor plugin, huh? Well, you know what I find? Like it, Figma has its own uh, CSS kind of a area that's built in. It's not a plugin, it's a part of their user interface. And I find that, you know, when it comes to a lot of the value, the properties and values they use, they hard code all the values. They're not like M, and they're not relative units as, as far as I'm aware. They're all like pixel based. So a lot of it you could just throw out. Um, I was thinking, let's see, where should the confetti be positioned here? So if we click this, hmm, oh, that's kind of, I didn't realize it was kind of like clipped inside of here. That actually doesn't look too bad now that I look at it. Yeah, you know what, leave it as it is. Or maybe we'll find some different confetti. I just don't like when it comes down, it all gets clipped off noticeably at the bottom. Um, but leave it where it is, but only make it so that um, it shows up once the test is complete. Yeah. Hey, it's James Q. Quick. Uh, what's your YouTube channel? This is a, somebody from the um, YouTube creators. Discord uh, server, 64K subscribers coming up uh, pretty big here. How many videos? 4.2 million views, awesome stuff. Yeah, so this is part of the uh, um, the, nav the design that I have going for, for the designcourse.com really launch. Um, so we're gonna have videos and tests and user submitted projects uh, that I review. So it's like a comprehensive way to learn UI design and all that. So uh, these tests will just help people try to figure out which of these fundamentals is incorrect. So white space is wrong because this is way too close. Contrast is wrong in the search bar, especially that icon, which needs to be of a certain contrast and people will learn that way. Awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. Of course, it's not all complete yet, nowhere near. All right. Now this is built from the ground up pretty much. Um, I forget what the stack is, it's, what is it? Uh, it's view, but it's view SSR with, what, what is that called, Nuxt? I think so. Yeah, JVS, our moderator, um, created it. Going quite well. All right, awesome. Well, I've been streaming for 58 minutes. Wow, that took exactly an hour. So that's exactly where I wanted to end. Um, of course, this may not be the, the, the I can guarantee you the, the final result will be different than what's listed here. So it all needs to make sense um, in terms of the linear progression and you know, do I show a test next? Do I show a course on some specific topic or do I show just a single one-off video? I think the UI design fundamentals will need to be um, probably in their own course. So it, they won't take up so much space in this primary curriculum area. All right, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream and we'll do this again maybe some other time. I, because I wanna work on this every day uh, and also include people to get feedback, I, I might start streaming more often throughout the week um, just, just to you know, get people interested in it as well. Um, also, if you have any input about the course and things you wanna see, join the Discord server and come over to, oops, 
I uh, let's see where is it at? We have a channel specifically for it, Design Course Com. So you can ask questions and 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 I'm sharing progress with the, the uh, content that I make and everything else. Awesome. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. And by the way, thanks for that super chat, whoever sent that.